Contra Anniversary Collection was released on the PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch on June 11, 2019. I am only covering the PC version here since I haven't played the other ones, so some of the small issues stated in this video might only be issues with this version. So let's just jump right in and see how this collection turned out. This is the third collection that Konami has released this year for its anniversary, and it's filled with some of my favorite games from one of my favorite series of all time, Contra. This collection includes the arcade versions of Contra and Super Contra, Contra and Super C for the NES, the Japanese version of Contra for the Famicom, Contra 3 The Alien Wars for the SNES, Contra Hardcore for the Genesis, Operation C for the Game Boy, and the previously released only in Europe games, Super Probotector for the Super Famicom, and Probotector for the Mega Drive. The collection is going for $20 in US currency, which is honestly a pretty damn good deal if you don't have all of these games already. So let me give you a quick rundown of these games and how well they perform, as well as what features are included in the collection. The story in the Contra series is pretty simple. Aliens invade, and a small group of commandos has to stop them from taking over the Earth. The goal is to run, jump, and shoot your way to victory, letting nothing stand in your way. The best device for this series that I learned early on is to never stop shooting. Enemies can come from anywhere and at any time, so it's best to always be moving and be on the alert. The games are all really intense and control rather well. Everything feels nice, tight, and responsive, which is super important due to all the games being very difficult and the fact that bullets, missiles, and enemies will be flying at you every step of the way. The controls are simple too, with the early titles only using two buttons besides the D-pad on the controller to just jump and shoot. Later titles like Contra 3 and Contra Hardcore add the ability to carry and switch multiple weapons, as well as being able to lock your character in place so they can shoot in any direction without moving. The latter is such a great feature, and I wish it could have been in every Contra title. As far as the gameplay goes, the Contra series is pretty infamous for being difficult and very action-packed. The default for each game is having only three lives, with each life being able to take only one hit, and after those lives are spent, it's game over. Continues are limited as well, with most titles only giving you a supply of three. This can make these games super tough, but what can I say, I'm a sucker for difficult games. Thankfully though, for those who don't have the patience or want to learn these games without as much frustration, you can use the infamous Konami code to raise the amount of lives for each continue to 30, except in Super C, where the amount is only raised to 10. This doesn't work for every game though, because Contra 3, Contra Hardcore, Super Probotector, and Probotector don't allow this. Also, local co-op is available for all of these games, with the exception of Operation C, and taking on the Contra games with a buddy is always a blast. No online multiplayer is available though. Now let's talk about regional differences in the games real quick. The Famicom version of Contra was released one year after the North American version, so it has some added features, such as more aggressive enemies and bosses, some graphical flourishes like moving foliage, an opening cinematic when starting the game, short cutscenes after each stage, and a map screen in between the stages as well. Other than that, the game seems pretty much the same. I'm really glad they included this version because I had previously never gotten around to playing it. As far as the Probotector games go, they are mostly the same as the North American versions, but they have all the human characters changed to robots, so it would be less violent than running around shooting a bunch of humans. A few minor swear words were also censored in the Mega Drive Probotector game. When selecting these two titles on the main menu, there's an option to play them in either their original 50Hz presentation or a new turbo mode where they're playable at 60Hz. I went with the 60Hz mode because that's more of what I'm accustomed to. I appreciate these titles being added because I never got to play these either. My only complaint here is that I wish that Probotector games for the NES would have been here too, but that's really just me being a little greedy. Every game included uses a menu that can be accessed by using the left trigger on the controller and gives some options such as the ability to quick save and quick load, save a replay of your gameplay, change the black border of the screen to a wallpaper, or change the aspect ratio or add certain filters to the games. In the aspect ratio section, the choices are original, pixel perfect, and 16 by 9. Scan lines can be added as well, but I didn't really use this very much because it's not my preference. Operation C has a filter called Dot Matrix where it can emulate a Game Boy screen, and since the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, I've kind of fallen in love with using this filter while I play the Game Boy games in these collections. I also left my aspect ratio on all the games at original, and left the wallpaper setting turned off. The quick save feature will really come in handy for those who struggle with these games, as well as people who might just want to pick up and play for a few minutes here and there. As far as the graphics go, 
The entire collection looked how it should, with the exception of the NES titles looking a little drab on my monitor, but that could have just been an issue with my monitor. I didn't have any issues with slowdown, other than the slowdown that was in the original games, so everything seemed to run great to me. There aren't any resolution options, and to get the game to run in full screen, you just need to press Alt-Enter at the same time. There's also no way to exit the collection for some reason, so you have to press Alt-F4 to stop the program. The only other issue I had with the game was it crashed once when I went into one of the game's menus. As for the sound, it was a little off in the music department with having some weird stuff going on with the music in the NES games, where it wasn't quite being emulated smoothly. I will say it was a step up from the sounds coming from the Castlevania Anniversary Collection I reviewed a few weeks back though. All in all, the sound was okay, but not perfect. The icing of the cake of this collection is a nice little bonus book that has a lot of goodies like concept art of all the games, info on each title, interviews, and a bit of history of the series. I really liked reading and looking through these things and I'm glad they added them. So would I recommend Contra Anniversary Collection? Well, if you don't already have these games or just want to play them in one convenient place, then yes. If you already own them and think this will add something new like enhanced graphics or online multiplayer, it doesn't. These are just the classics close to their original presentation. For anyone who grabs this collection though, there are several hours of content to be enjoyed here, and plenty of games included, so I don't see any issue with the collection's price. All in all, this is a pretty great collection, so if you aren't bothered by any of the issues that I mentioned, then go ahead and grab this one.